Welcome back to another episode of The Breakaway Show with David and Fabian. Today is August 21st, and we have a lot to unpack and to talk about, as always. Isn't that right? It is, and I might be a little quiet today because I just got my teeth whitened, and they are very, very sensitive. So if you've had them whitened, you understand. Got it done a few hours ago, but hey, they look good. No pain, no gain. Got to make sure we don't blow any wind towards you either, because I know the wind might be a little sensitive on Anything the teeth. Cold. Huh? Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, it's been an event, uh, quite eventful three days, and now we have news of RFK potentially dropping Ooh. out and supporting Donald Trump, which would, which would send shockwaves throughout the throughout the country, basically, because as we were talking, we know RFK can get a lot of the votes. Uh, and he's taking apparently a lot more from Trump than he is from Biden, so or Harris. So that's going to be interesting to talk about. Um, what else happened in the last few days, David? Well, the DNC started, so all the weird rituals that the Democrats are used to doing, we're seeing it front row on the national television. Yep. Um, it's gotten they, weirder. It's gotten weirder. <laughs> and somebody made a great point. So President Trump... During the RNC, he invited families of, uh, of hostages that are right now in Israel. The DNC, what did they invite? They invite a bunch of people on the stage to take an abortion pill. So, wait, 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 what? So a, a clear difference between two parties and their conventions, right? So the RNC, President Trump, who did he invite to, to the attendance? The hostages, uh, family of hostages in uh, Israel right now or in Gaza. Who does the DNC invite to the convention? People to take a, a pill on the stage to say, I just took an abortion pill. They, so They did it on stage. They do it on stage, correct. Wow. Yeah. Every year, every not every year, obviously, but every convention, that's a big thing that they'll hmm. put on the stage, a woman or a couple women or a bunch of women that take a abortion pill. I did not know that. So, so celebrating the killing of babies. Yeah. That's, and it, that's a very interesting thing, actually. Well, they did a lot. You saw the same article I saw, how there's a mobile yep. uh, Planned Parenthood unit there, right? Because apparently so many people that are coming to the convention just so happen to need an abortion. Or what's even weirder is that a bunch of these people are, are on a wait list to get a vasectomy. Like, <laughs> like, geez, I, I, I seriously don't get it. I this, mean, this is a, it's a nihilistic death cult. It literally is where they don't want anyone to have babies and they are restricting themselves from having babies. So the men are getting vasectomies, the women are getting abortions. They're not going to procreate enough to perpetuate this leftist ideology. Here's what I think. If I'm the guy pulling the strings in the back, if I'm, I don't know, the Rothschilds or the Bilderbergs or the Soroses, and I really want to depopulate the earth, I'm going to want probably to depopulate, I mean, you would assume the weakest people Mm -hmm. right and if if these people are so weak minded that they don't even think that they should have babies themselves because it's a service to the earth gaia then effectively i'm doing the depopulation without a actually having to depopulate anyone i'm just allowing them to be indoctrinated and then and then depopulating themselves so the useful idiots are the ones that always you know go first and it looks like this is exactly what's happening again it is. And, and a good example of that happening in a country that everybody's talking about is Israel. So before October 7th, the only time you saw Israel on the news was because they were pushing for some sort of uh, judicial reform. Essentially, they said that the Supreme Court has too much power and is able to cancel any legislation put forward by the Knesset Congress. That was the only time anybody saw Israel on the news before October 7th. Um, why were they doing this? Well, because the legislation became a super conservative majority. Why? There's only 10 million people that live in Israel. Why would this happen? Well, because conservatives, who, Orthodox, religious Jews, they tend to have a big family, five, six, seven kids. The liberal progressive Jews, that uh, maybe they're not so religious anymore, um, don't have any kids. So what happened after about 50, 60 years of this state being a, a state? Hmm. The conservatives overwhelmingly now, uh, you know, are the majority there. And now they're trying to use any sort of means to try and stop that, which is what was the Supreme Court. So that's a perfect representation hmm. of what can happen in the United States in about 50 years. If the ideology among the left is to be anti-family, 
to do these abortion things at DNC conventions and vasectomies and whatnot, then they're going to depopulate themselves. And, and, and in about 40, 50 years, you're going to see way more conservatives representing in, in Congress than you do progressives because of this simple issue. Yeah. No, yeah. But uh, the DNC is creepy overall. That's what I can say. And, and it actually perfectly represents how radical and extreme the overall party has become because they are appealing to a bunch of tiny groups. It's the left's favorite game, game right, is to play identity politics marginalized groups into as many little groups as possible and feed them whatever that they want to and call it intersectionality like it's some cool thing (laughs) that's funny (laughs) oh man so So we've seen uh i think kamala harris came out last night or tonight Mm -hmm. and uh, tim waltz already came out obama came out biden they had him on i think like at midnight (laughs) the first night past his bedtime just to mess with him that is so funny. Um, some some aide that's really close to Biden texted a reporter and, and he said, this is absolutely ridiculous. We handed them over a campaign on a silver plate, which I will criticize myself that it wasn't, but they're saying that they handed over this campaign to them. And how do they treat them? They pushed them out of the prime time. So when people were tuning in, they weren't tuning in to see Biden. They were tuning in to see one of the most popular governors in the United States, Governor Bashir from Kentucky. They didn't want they they want it's crazy. They put I think they put Biden strategically there on Monday as a way to just get him out the way and to start to build up the excitement towards Kamala Harris. So not only did they, you know, push him out the way by putting him on Monday, but then they completely push him out of prime time and put him in at like it was on the East Coast. It was 1130 p.m. when he started to speak. It was an hour long speech, which is just incredible. I, wow. I don't know how he spoke for an hour, but he did. Well, he probably finally gave him his medications for once. Mm, you know what I mean? The, the medications uh, they seem to have forgotten to give him during the debate night. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, uh, so we know that Michelle Obama, uh, Mitchell, mm-hmm. has spoken at the DNC and said a line that says, we will never benefit from the affirmative action of generational wealth. <laughs> now, this is a bold claim. For someone who has an $18 million house on Martha's Vineyard. Uh, so I looked up Sasha Obama's net worth. Okay. And as of 2024, so this is Sasha Obama is obviously her daughter. Or someone else's daughter, depending on who you believe. She is worth $10 million. Wait, wait, Ten, wait, wait. The daughter? The daughter. Just one of them is worth $10 million million dollars what the hell is she doing is she also selling some kind of paintings that we don't know about well think about it michelle just said we will never benefit from the affirmative action of generational wealth but her daughter is worth 10 million dollars already and she inherited eight and a half million through her trust fund okay oh. which includes many real estate assets and investment in stock markets according to forbes so mm. they're telling you on one hand we will never benefit from generational wealth transfer but then their daughter is already worth 10 million dollars because of a wealth transfer from one generation to the next so it's super hypocritical at its highest to be talking to a certain set of people and saying hey just you know you're poor you're not going to benefit from rich people but you're a rich person and your child is benefiting from you what you're telling people and you're speaking against that other people do the hypocrisy is just astronomical well, it's classic hypocrisy by Democrats, so that's nothing new with them there. But this actually reminds me a lot of overall BLM, because BLM taunts this idea to uh, blacks that you will never succeed in America. It's systemically racist, while the people that are collecting the funds that are in charge of the BLM Foundation are sitting there and racking out, buying multi Uh, million dollar estates, Mm -hmm. paying their brothers and baby mamas millions of dollars for security or consulting stuff, right? While spitting into the face of the very own people that they're trying to, that they're claiming that they're helping um, by saying, you will never succeed in America. So give us money. (laughs) It's always the same. The people doing the work get screwed and the people running the people are the ones who make money. The same thing with Hamas. You know, they're, they're, basically destitute right now in Gaza. Hamas is getting all his money, but it's going to the rich people, one of them who just got a, a nice little bomb dropped on him not so long ago. And so now he's not spending any, spending any money because he's not of this world anymore. Um, but it's the same thing every single time. 
we see these leaders and they make money off the backs of the citizens. We see it, you know, the big guy, Joe Biden, got 10%. If you read the text and you understand them, uh, he's getting 10% from every deal. Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, all making money off all these deals. And it's the people at the bottom who are literally getting vasectomy so that they don't procreate. Those are the people literally taking abortion pills on the stage of the DNC. The people that are being used by the Obamas, the Clintons, the the Bidens. Let's make this full circle as well. They're promoting them to not have families in the name of climate change, right? Because they believe that mm-hmm. the more kids they have, the more they will harm mm-hmm. the environment. While the people that are telling this to them are banking off all this stuff while continuously buying f- beachfront properties and flying on private jets. And having families. And having families. <laughs> and, and, and Fabian, let's complete the full circle here. And then passing that generational wealth to who? Their it's kids. Their own kids. <laughs> the hypocrisy, it's just it literally, it, it writes itself. Like, this is the funniest story. If it was a movie, I'd be like, this can never happen. Yeah. So a bunch of these people trick the people into not having kids into you know, m- mutilating children's bodies, but they have families, but they have millions of dollars. How is it that, that you know, I mean, uh, Mar- uh, Mar- Marie Antoinette famously said, let them let the eat cake. And she got beheaded because they were like, she's so out of touch with the real world that she thinks we're all eating cake because they have festivals every single night. <laughs> I mean, I think it's time that some of these elites uh, have the people find out what, they, what they're really doing. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And they won't. But that's just how that's just the name of the game for them, right? Even if they do, they'll convince them that it's not real. Hmm. Because they're pawns at the end of the day. They are pawns. They are literally pawns. And the way they think also very much mimics a pawn. Not being able to see more than what's in front of you, to the side of you, or behind you. Nothing further than just one step anywhere. And a pawn can only move forward. It cannot move backwards. Oh, that's right. It can't move backwards. It can't move backwards. And it can't move to the side either. Oh, it, it can cannot. eat to the side, but... And it, can only move, and it can only move one pace or one square at a time. Except mm. for the first move, it can go two. After that, so they literally are pawns. Because progressives have to keep progressing. They can't move backwards or they become con- conservative. <laughs> so they can only go one way. And the queen or whoever's playing the game, whoever's is moving the pawns. So they literally are pawns. Hmm. It's a good way to put it, honestly. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who are pawns. Majority of the time, people who are pawns are just very ideologically driven and don't tend to do any, I would guess, independent research outside of what they hear in their echo chamber or from their favorite personalities. And right, that's literally, and it happens on the right just as much as it happens on the left. Yep. And uh, with the left, it just so happened to be with this whole entire circle we just talked about. These are people that have been so demoralized by their favorite personalities or role models that they believe are role models that they are like, okay, they're willing to do everything like that. So, And the interesting thing is the people who are doing this, I would assume a lot of it, a lot of them are just normally good people. But neo-Marxism preys on the goodness of people to get you to stop doing things because it's not nice and this is one of the most amazing things that they've done is they've they've done all the self-censorship this uh get a vasectomy these people are doing it because they think they're helping they literally think they're helping but the people leading them are the narcissist so the leaders are narcissistic the people are well well to do they're and they're being controlled and indoctrinated by these narcissists to do their bidding. Mm. So I wish more people would realize, like, why am I doing this? Who told me I have to have a vasectomy to save the world? Why, is, why are they telling me this? And why are the people that are telling me this not doing it themselves? I mean, it's a very, very easy logical conclusion to draw, like, maybe I'm being duped. It's just not so common to have common sense anymore. Common sense, not right? so common. <laughs> because just the way that you broke it down, anybody that is engaged in that, if they could just pull themselves outside of that for a second and look at what is actually happening, what the people that are telling them to do this of what they are doing, they would come to an easy conclusion. Like, okay, maybe this isn't in my best interest. It's in the best interest of the people telling me that. So um, Absolutely. I mean, if I'm seeing Obama buying beach houses, if I'm seeing Obama... Uh, Greta Thunberg, who touts climate change, flying on these jets that emit more CO2 than all you've, that all you emit in, you know, in an entire year. 
okay, so these people are doing everything. They're, they're, they're doing nothing that they're telling me to do, but they're doing everything that they're telling me is what the bad people do. But yeah, I'm still going to believe them and do what they say because they're the mouthpiece of our movement. Like, mm. for what? Like, why? You know what? That's actually how I feel about something that is happening on the right. And we can kind of switch gears like this a little oh, bit. Oh, that's a great gear to switch. <laughs> you know, I made a video yesterday that kind of called out Candace Owens. Mm. And after I made that video, I actually saw PBD's podcast. And since I saw a little segment of it, I couldn't stop to think about this exact thought that I'm about to say. So we're 75 days from one of the most important elections of our times. And people like Candace Owens, for example, all they're doing right now is talking about Israel. Now, when she talks about Israel, it creates divisiveness within the Republican Party. This division, the civil war only benefits the left. Yep. When I see the Washington Post outline this, it doesn't help the right. It only benefits the left. So I started to think to myself, why are personalities like this that are very popular in this independent community, um, political mind community and whatnot, why are they so hyper-focused on an issue that is, going, uh, that is not going to help Trump be, uh, become the, nomin or the president in November? And that, that just has been stuck in my head like ever since, seriously, because you really think about it, why? Yep. Why are they so wasting so much time on this right now? Yeah, I mean, like you said, you, you brought up a good point. We are in 75 days or so away from the most important election in our lifetime by far. You have communism knocking on the door. You have institutions that have been taken over by these people. And there's people who are focusing on Israel. Like, okay, may, okay if you're worried about it, that's fine. But, I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening that you should be talking about right now. Win the White House, and then, you know, after you win, then you can figure out, hey, what's going on? Um, I've always said I think this Nick Fuentes kid is a, is a psyop. You have. You've been literally saying that ever since the minute that I told you about this Nick Fuentes kid. Yeah. Um, I've, I've heard his name. You know, I, I'd heard his name, and when I researched him, I'm like, hold on a second. This doesn't make any sense. Like, why is he so, why is he the face of the new, what, like, I don't know what you would call it. The, the, White the, Christian the, Nationalist Movement. Yeah, the Groypers, I guess they're called. Groypers, yeah. So to me, he's a psyop. How Kenneth Owen fits into that, I don't know. How Dan Bozarian fits into it, I think he's trying to recreate himself, and this is an issue that he's, I don't know, attached himself to, mm -hmm. rather than any other issue going on. Um, like, you know, any other issue. And then now you have, uh, who's the other person part of it? Uh, Ryan Tate, Garcia, I think. Ryan Garcia, the Tate brothers joined in. The thing is, is that all these people claim to be Trump supporters. Like, I'm a Trump guy. And Kenneth says, well, I'm a big fan of Trump and everything like this. Yet 75 days before the election, they're focusing on nothing that actually helps Trump win. And if anything, they're actually leading a movement against Trump. Because, for example, Nick Fuentes said that him and his Groyper gang uh, declared war on Trump because he's... Uh, just doesn't fit what they want. Well, okay, so you, what are you going to do? End up voting for Kamala? You're not going to vote for Kamala. By you not voting for Trump, you're doing everything. You're literally actively helping Kamala win like that. Bro, it, it is a psyop. And I don't think Candace is a psyop. I think she's a grifter. I think she's trying to stay relevant because she saw October 7th. She didn't do anything immediately, but she saw this big demand of this anti-Israel rhetoric. Like, people need that. And I think she found a way how to stay relevant right now. But it's, it's at the expense of potentially causing Trump the election. Yeah, I don't know where her angle is. Uh, I, I think she maybe means well. I don't know, maybe she's listening to uh, people on that ultra far right, which we knew was going to come. You know, James Lindsay has been talking about this since like 2017, I think, 2018. And Jordan Peterson as well, right? You have an equilibrium that you always have to be at. When you pull too far to the left, like we've been for the last over five years now, then when it, you know, when it swings back, you're going to go all the way to the right. And we're seeing this, you know, we're seeing Christian nationalism come up in conversation, be everywhere. The mainstream media is talking about it. They're trying to make it a thing. Uh, who's more dangerous? I mean, it could be either side at any point in time. Right now it's a left. Mm -hmm. They're much more dangerous. But when the pendulum swings, as it's starting to do now, you're going to have this movement or it looks like it's already starting of these ultra right, hmm. which are just as bad as the ultra left, but they just think they're different. 
but they use the same methods to employ, that they employ the same methods to arrive at their destination. It's just the only difference is the ideologies, but the mechanisms is basically the same. Take away everyone's right to do some say you have to do this, and if not, then you know you're 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 SOL. So it, you're right. I mean, it's really interesting that this is a topic that ever, that, that that they're talking about, seventy five days out from an election that could have, I mean, world changing impact. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Fabian. And to kind of maybe just cap that uh, conversation, um, I don't think either side like if kamala wins there's not going to be major difference in terms of foreign policy it'll actually maybe be less israeli friendly mm -hmm. if trump gets into office i don't think there's going to be any different maybe more support for israel but what is more support we're providing them aid we're you know doing the stuff so yeah just to kind of end that I, I i just don't understand why and i think PBD actually said it best that maybe all these people feel good right now because maybe Candace Owens is getting all these messages of you're amazing. You're fighting the real war. You're fighting a big enemy and whatnot. But November 5th, if Kamala uh, becomes president, all these good feelings and good messages are going to go completely out the window because these people don't care about that whatsoever. They care about President Trump becoming Trump uh, president again. And if November 5th comes and it's not that hopefully they get a backlash for spending the you know 75 days outside the election being worried about something like this well and the other thing is too is look what's going to happen to just think about what will happen to social media hmm. if we have another democratic democratic elected president or democrat elected president they're going to shut everything down i mean you think we have a hard time we have a hard time every day we're so shadow banned on most networks most social media platforms let Kamala Harris get in, get in office and have a fresh four years to appeal to her far left voters who want nothing more than to shut your freedom of speech down because it is the one thing that's stopping them from having complete control of the conversation and complete control of the narrative. It's the one thing. And the only thing stopping him is Elon Musk. And he's one website. And we've already had companies, countries themselves, come out against Elon Musk, threaten, whether it be Venezuela, whether it be England, whether it be anybody. Yeah. So we see it happening. Yeah, and we don't even have to have a hypothetical here or anything like that. When Tim Walz has said it himself, he said that there is no room in our democracy for misinformation or disinformation. And we know that it's all subjective when it comes down to figuring out what actually is misinformation, and disinformation. Because they can say the conversation you and I are having right now is misinformation just so this narrative doesn't come out to push against whatever narrative that they're trying to paint yeah. the picture on. So, And as I said before, and I'll say it again, the government is the biggest, is the biggest doer of misinformation and disinformation, but they want to control so that they can only do it and we can't. <laughs> so if we say anything that they say, uh, you know, if we say anything against what they're saying, then we get in trouble. Mm. But they can mix facts, they can, you know, take studies and combine them and create studies and pay off scientists and it's okay if they do it because they're the mob but if we do it we can't on that point why don't we talk about the labor department just releasing an interesting report that they've overestimated the amount of job growth by almost a million is around eight hundred thousand. and that i think perfectly goes with what you're talking about them manipulating information them using whatever activists they can in these institutions to benefit whatever narrative that they're trying to build. Because for the last year, all we've heard from legacy media is how good the economy is doing. Look at these job growth numbers. Every month, they're taunting new numbers. This is twice the what we expected it to be. Just for 75 days before the election to come out with this damning report that they've quite literally overestimated they didn't overestimate. They gaslit the American people in order to benefit the Harris-Biden campaign. Um, it's interesting to see why they suddenly came out with this report. Yep. But um, again, perhaps this is just an extension of what you and I have been theorizing about, is that now there's perhaps a campaign against Kamala for how radical she's actually coming out to be. Absolutely. For example, with price gouging yep. or, or banning, I guess, having a federal ban on price gouging. Yeah, and also one number that I wanted to bring up here because it's it's pretty eye, it's pretty eye opening. One during this time, 1.2 million native-born Americans lost employment over the last year. 
while 1.3 million foreign-born workers found jobs. Oh, look at that. So not only are Americans losing jobs, they're literally being replaced. And this is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They just made their largest downward revision of job numbers in 15 years. Oh, my in God. 15 in 15 years. years. Imagine getting it that wrong. So you're right. Number one, we're being replaced. Number two... Wait, we heard that that's a conspiracy theory driven by white nationalists on the right. I mean, unless there's <laughs> 1.2 million na na white nationalists that lost their job and got replaced, I mean, it's... Sounds about right. But yeah, you're right. Why are they, the, why are they releasing this now? Why, why are they saying, oops, we, we made an oopsie, when we clearly know that they cook the numbers all the time. Inflation, the amount of money out there, everything. Everything's a facade. Is it that... There's elements of the Biden White House, the Biden